In the last video, we wrote this very simple homepage view, which returned a static HTML template. In this video, what we're going to do is write a second view, and it's going to be slightly more interesting because it's going to fetch data from the database, and it's going to add it to the context and render that data in a template. So let's just start by creating a view here called product. And this view, again, will take the request as a parameter. Now, the difference between the previous one and this one is that this view will need to access the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to fetch all of the products using the product.objects.all query. And of course, we need to import the product model, and we can do that at the top. So once we have all the products, what I'm going to do is copy this render statement here, and I'm going to paste that in. And what we can do is we can change the name of the template to products.html. Now, products.html is a simple template that I've created, and we're going to work on that in a second. And what we can also do is specify a context dictionary. So I'm going to add a key of products here, and that's going to map to the products that we pulled out of the database on line 10. We can then take that context and we can add it to the render statement as a third parameter. Now, this means that we have a list of products that we can then iterate over in products.html. So if we go to this, we're again extending the base template at the top and we have a content block here. Now, when we have a query set of objects from the database, we can iterate over them if they're in the template context. So for each product in the list of products, we're going to perform some kind of action in a template for loop. Now, again, all of this is just setup code, so we can write some tests. But what we're going to do if we do have a list of products, for each one of them, we're going to render out the product's name in a simple paragraph tag, so nothing special going on here at all. If we look at models.py and go to the product model, the product has a name, it also has a price and a stock count. We're just going to render the name here, and then we can use the empty alternative if we don't have anything in the loop to render out something different here. So if we don't have any products in the database, let's just give a message here of no products available. So now that we've written a view and we have a template here that's going to list out the name of every single product, what we can also do is go to the project urls.py file and we're going to add another path here. So let's give it a URL of slash products and that's going to map to views.products. Now I'm also going to give this a name. Let's give it a name of products here. And that means we can reference this URL using the reverse function in Python. And we're going to do that within our tests. Now there's a couple of things we want to do in the test that we weren't able to do in the test for the homepage view here. And the most important one is making sure that the context contains the expected data. So the context is something you pass to the template so that it can render dynamic information in the HTML output and then send that response back to the client. We're going to check the context in this products endpoint. So what we're going to do now is go to our tests directory that we've been working with, and we're going to go to testviews.py. Now we wrote a very simple test class in the last video, and that inherited from the simple test case. But because we need database access for this new view, we're going to inherit from the test case instead. So let's create a second class in this file. And we're going to call this class test products page, and it's going to inherit from the Django test case class. And we're going to define a setup method here, and that's going to take self as a parameter. And I want to create two objects in the database here within the setup method. So we're going to call product.objects.create, and we're going to give the product a name of laptop and a price of 1000. And as you can see in VS Code, we need to import the product model. So let's go to the top of this test file and import the product. And if we go back to the function, I'm going to create a second product here. So let's copy that line below and let's change the name to phone. And I'm going to give this one a price of 800. So remember from before that the code in the setup method is going to be called before every single test method in this class. So let's now start writing some test methods here. And again, we want to make sure the correct template is used. So we're going to create a test method here called test products uses the correct template. And what we're going to do here is again use the test client to send a get request to the products endpoint. That's going to give us back a response. So we're going to call self.client.get. And what I want to do here at the top is import Django's reverse function. So let's paste this in. From Django.urls, we import reverse. And then if we go back to the get function here, we can reverse the products URL that we have in the urls.py file. And if you're wondering where this comes from, let's go back to urls.py. This was the name that we gave to this given path in the Django application. So if you have a named path, you can refer to that using the reverse function and it's going to return that path 
and then we're going to send a get request to that in order to get this response. Now we want to make sure here that we're using products.html as the template for this response. So again, let's call that assertion method, assert template used, and we pass the response into that along with products.html. And that's going to ensure that the correct template is used for this given response. So let's clear the terminal at the bottom. And again, we're going to run this test and we're getting a check constraint issue here that the stock needs to be greater than zero. So what I'm going to do is just add a stock count to these products. Let's set this one to five and I'm going to copy that and we'll go to the line below and we're going to set this one to 10 and then we can rerun the tests. So let's run that at the bottom. And now we have three tests and they're all passing. So let's clear the terminal and we're going to write a second test now underneath this one here. So let's create a new test function and I'm going to test the context here. So let's call this method test products context. And what we're going to do here, if we minimize the terminal is we're going to copy this line of code to send the get request. And let's bring that back into this method here. And when we send the request to the products endpoint, let's go to views.py. What we have here is a call to product.objects.all. So we're going to fetch all of the products from the database and we're going to add them to the template context. That means that if we go back here, the response should contain a context and there should be a key in that context called products. So let's test this out just now. What I'm going to do is call self.assert equal here. And what we're going to assert is that the length of the products in the context is equal to two. And the reason for that is because we have two products in the database at the time when this test is run. And that's because two products are added in the setup method. So what we can do here is call the len method and that's a built-in in Python. And we can reference response.context and not content, this should be context. And we can get the products key from that. And we're going to check that the length of that is equal to two. Now, as well as that, I want to add another couple of assertions here. And we're going to use assert contains again. We want to make sure our response contains the products that we've added in the setup method. So if we look at the name of this product, we have a name of laptop. If we go back to products.html, we should see the product name appearing in the content. So what we're going to do in the views or the test views is we're going to go to assert contains here and we're going to make sure that laptop appears in the response. And as well as laptop, we can check for the existence of the other item and that's the phone. So let's copy that and we're going to add that as another self.assert contains expression. And I'm going to show another assertion method added by Django. So if we go back to products.html, this message here saying no products available, we should not see that because we have products in the context. So let's just copy this line of code below here and I'm going to paste that in, but we should not see this. And there's another assertion method and that's assert not contains. And that's going to make sure the response does not contain a given piece of content. So let's go back to the terminal and rerun the test command. And you can see we have four tests and they're all passing. Now I want to test the inverse of this products context method. In other words, I want to test what happens when we don't have any products in the database. So let's create a function here or a method called test products view no products. And I could probably name this better. Basically, we're going to test what happens on the products view when we have no products in the database. Now, what we're going to do to start with is delete any products that are in the database. So product.objects.all.delete will do that. And then we can test sending a request to the products endpoint and getting that response. So I'm going to copy that line of code and let's bring that into our new method. And we can basically copy this and change self.assert not contains to self.assert contains. And let's get rid of not here. So basically the response should contain the message that there are no products available. And that's because we deleted all the products from the test database at the start of this test case. And I want to copy one more line of code and it's the second line of code from the above method. And let's bring that into this method as well. So we're going to check the response.context and we're going to get the products key here. We want to make sure that that is equal to zero or at least the length of it is equal to zero. And that's because we no longer have any products in the database. So I'm going to remove some of these new lines at the end of the file. And what we're going to do is go back to the terminal and let's clear this out and rerun the test command. And we now have five tests and they're all passing. And if we want to run the entire test suite, let's clear the terminal. And what we can do is just run manage.py test and we're not going to provide a path to any files. And that means all 11 tests in our Django project are going to run and you can see that they're all passing. So that's going to be all for this video. In the next video, we're going to add a form class and we're going to test submitting data using a post request. And we're going to write some test methods to make sure that that process works as expected. 
And if there are any problems with the submitted data, we're going to write tests to cover those cases as well. So that's been an introduction to testing views in Django. We'll move on to forms in the next video.